have broken down the primary and the secondary headaches um, to COVID-19. Uh, how did this impact overall patient wellness? And did you observe any associations with any other neurovascular complications, um, including things like stroke, which have been kind of discussed before um, so far? Well, I think, um, yes, the way we can organize in terms of headache, how COVID-19 can, um, can feature that as a symptom includes just how we divide headache disorders up in general, primary headaches that are you know, genetically driven headache disorders with environmental influences, and then secondary headaches or symptomatic headaches from other causes. So we've seen um, a number of secondary headache disorders with COVID-19 at our institution. Um, and this includes various types of cerebrovascular disease, including cerebral venous thrombosis, cervical artery dissection, this posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome, um, I think much of this could be related to the um, to the ability of COVID-19 relative to other um, viral illnesses to induce thrombosis. And um, our stroke group at uh, Cornell have um, have a large research study doing looking comparatively at COVID-19 versus influenza A and showing a sevenfold rate of ischemic stroke um, in such patients. So I think we expect to see more thrombotic complications that can feature headache um, with COVID-19. The counter is also um, the primary headache disorders, which, which could include COVID-19 as a viral illness, inciting a condition like migraine to just get worse over time. Uh, many patients with COVID-19 who have migraine seem to have an intractable type of migraine attack in the midst of having COVID infection, either in the earlier stages, perhaps related to the viral um, illness or in the later stages related to this inflammatory response thought to be from a cytokine storm that comes thereafter. Um, and then another headache condition that we expect to see because this has been seen with many other viral illnesses is this new daily persistent headache where a viral illness incites um, a daily headache from onset to develop perhaps as some inflammatory consequence that could have a migraine phenotype or a chronic migraine phenotype or a tension type headache phenotype that um, is long you know, the virus may have long cleared, but the headache can remain. And we've been headache specialists in general, and neurologists have seen that with many other um, viral illnesses. Is there any uh, takeaways or specific takeaways um, for your for the neurology community and the headache community itself um, that we're starting to see from emerge from this whole pandemic? Um, and do, do you foresee any long-term adaptations of clinical practice? I think we've already seen um, telemedicine and video visits be ingrained into our um, regular practice. And that seems to be something that'll be indefinite, although that might depend on um, federal and state level um, reimbursements for care and um, provisions for patients who might have um, non-commercial insurances to still use this modality to access their, their uh, clinicians. Um, so I'm hopeful that that is a positive change that comes out of it. Were there anything else that, that you observed or you thought that that people should really be knowing about that um, kind of flies under the radar? Well, I think um, as a neurologist and also as a headache specialist, I think one issue that we grapple with is how to define a visit that's essential um, and how, how, why, when should an in-person consultation be truly required? Um, and I think we have to be careful with that. I think, um, you know, a condition like migraine, for example, has, is at risk of being um, undervalued in a time like this because um, there isn't necessarily a physical manifestation of it. There isn't a diagnostic test that shows that there's something wrong. Yet migraine can be a progressive brain disease that plagues, you know, up to two, you know, migraine in general, 40 million Americans, chronic migraine, up to 2% of the population. And people have increased comorbidities, um, have, um, have just diminished ability to be a functional person in society. And I think um, we can't sort of forget that taking care of all of these patients with migraine or other neurologic disorders is truly um, essential. And we have to be careful not to marginalize um, patients who don't have physical or respiratory illnesses um, um, in how we organize care um, going forward.